Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today we are doing the Pearson at Excel, International AS Biology Practicals. And this is core practical one about using the semi-quantitative method with Benedict solution and iodine to estimate concentrations of reducing sugars as well as starch in specific substances. The first one is about using a semi-quantitative method with Benedict's reagent to estimate the concentration of reducing sugars. We need to know reducing sugars can be glucose, fructose, galactose, lactose, as well as maltose. At least for your level, those are some of the reducing sugars they'll give you. In this experiment, you need to have a sample that is suspected to contain reducing sugars. In your practical lab book, glucose is used as an example. So the procedure below is based on your lab book and I'll do some demonstration on the next page. You'll need to remember the solutions of reducing sugars change the color of Benedict solution depending on the concentration of the sugars. The color can change from blue to green to yellow to orange and then to red from the lowest to the highest concentration of the reducing sugar respectively. In this kind of question, they can ask you to describe an experiment of using a semi-quantitative method to estimate the concentration of reducing sugars in a food by referring to a stock solution of glucose as well as Benedict solution. You need to begin by finding ways of diluting the stock solution. For example, in your practical lab book, they give a stock of 2% glucose solution, but you can dilute that into get a 1%, a 0.5%, a 0.2% and a 0.1% solution. In this experiment, you need to have six test tubes as well as six beakers. So you need to use a waterproof pen to label six test tubes and six more beakers with different glucose concentrations they will contain. You need to label the six test tube for juice because that is going to contain the sample whose reducing sugar concentration you want to estimate. Then you will add Benedict solution, which is about two centimeters cubed to each of the test tubes, including the six test tube. And again, in this case, this part, you don't have to use a clean syringe each time, but for the glucose, you need to use a clean syringe every time so that the concentration is maintained as you want it. So in the next step, using a clean syringe each time, add one centimeter cubed of each glucose solution to the corresponding label test tube. You also need to add one centimeter cubed of fruit juice into the sixth test tube. And then you have to check gently to ensure that they are fully mixed. And in the next step, you will place them in a water bath and start a timer to allow them two minutes so that they can interact. You will then use tongs to remove the test tubes from the water bath and put them onto a test tube rack and then observe the colors that are formed and record your results in a suitable table. Continue down. You will have different concentrations of glucose solution in small beakers. In these test tubes, you're going to put about two centimeters cubed of Benedict solution. And after you transfer a specific volume from each of these glucose concentrations into each corresponding test tube, and then in the end, you observe the color. The highest concentration is going to be red. And again, I'm not saying 2% is going to be red. It means if you have different concentrations, the highest is going to be red. The next is going to be orange. We'll have a yellow, we'll have a green. And the one that has the least or actually unchanged is going to be blue because the color of Benedict solution is actually blue. And it's going to change this way from blue to red based on the concentration of the reducing sugar in your sample. The color of Benedict solution is also going to be changed in this unknown sample. And because this is a semi-quantitative method, you will look at this color and the other colors to estimate where this color lies. For example, if this color is kind of orange red, then the concentration is going to lie between these two. However, if it's blue green, then the concentration is going to lie in between that. So if you can do that, you'll be able to estimate the concentration of the reducing sugar in a specific sample using the semi-quantitative method. In the next step, I'm going to go to using iodine to estimate the concentration of starch in a specific sample. So here, using a semi-quantitative method with iodine solution to estimate the concentration of starch. You need to know that samples of starch change the color of iodine solution from yellow to blue-black. And in this question, they can ask to describe an experiment to use the semi-quantitative method to determine or estimate the presence of starch in a food sample by referring to stock solution of starch and using iodine. And again, you will need to plan out your experiment well by using the given stock solution 
of starch and diluting it into specific concentrations. Usually they allow about five different concentrations and also including your sample that you want to test as the sixth. You can use the 2% starch solution to make the following five concentrations of starch solution. You can make a 2%, 1%, 0.5%, 0.2%, and a 0.1%. You will dilute, or dilution can be carried out using distilled water to make up to 5 cm cubed of each solution in a small beaker. You will use a waterproof pen to label the small beakers as well as the test tubes with their corresponding concentrations of starch solution. And then you will label the sixth unknown because that contains the sample you want to test. And then you add 0.5 cm cubed of iodine solution to each of the six test tubes. And you will use a clean syringe each time. And then you add a further 10 cm cubed of distilled water in the test tube. Then using a clean syringe each time, you will add 5 cm cubed of each solution to the corresponding label test tube. And then you add 5 cm cubed of the unknown starch solution into the sixth test tube to compare the color produced with your sample as well as the other test tubes whose concentration is perfectly known. You will then record your results in a suitable table. So again, this is a demonstration. You will have six small beakers. These are going to be the different concentrations of starch solution. And this is going to be your sample you suspect to contain starch. And then you will lay out six test tubes. This is going to be for the unknown concentration. And the others are going to be corresponding to the specific starch solutions. You'll begin by putting iodine in here and then put in the starch sample and allow them to interact by shaking. You'll then compare this sample with the other five different samples to see where this color lies along your spectrum that you have created in order to estimate the concentration. So I hope this has been helpful. And uh, it brings us to the end of this first experiment called Practical One for IAS Biology. Thank you for being with us. Do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.